Hello everyone, it's Alice at Welding and today I'm talking to Joy Shaverin, who is a Jungian psychoanalyst and the first person who coined the term boarding school syndrome. So thank you for joining me, Joy. Maybe we could start by just a description of what boarding school syndrome is. So boarding school syndrome is something that I noticed in my patients over a period of time and the patients of other people too. And boarding school syndrome is a pattern, a set, a set of, uh, a pattern of behaviours and dis, discontents really um, that often are presented in adult patients who suffer with depression. Perhaps they come to therapy not knowing that boarding school had really had an effect on them. But what they often describe is something similar, problems with intimacy, often broken and failed relationships, uh, a, um, a set of, of um, a very commonly cutting off from emotion, cutting off from the, the loved person. So in a relationship, cutting off before the person abandons them. And we can trace that back to, to what I call the ABCD of boarding school syndrome. The causes are abandonment, then there's bereavement. What we call homesickness is actually a form of bereavement. That the child is bereaved, they have lost everything. They've lost all these attachment figures, really, and they are, are bereaved. So that is similar to what's described as bereavement. When somebody dies, it's like they're suddenly alone, they're lost, they start searching. All the things that Colin Murray Parks talks about, about bereavement are replayed with a child in a boarding school. So they, first of all, can't believe it, they're shocked. They then start searching and thinking, bargaining. Well, you know, if I'm really good, maybe they'll come and get me. Um, because often children feel they were really bad and that's why they've been abandoned. How else does a child explain their parents just leaving them? with strangers. So the child is bereaved, they are bereft, the, the grief they feel is so genuine and it's called homesickness. Children are often told, just get on with it, you're homesick, you're just feeling, um, they are sick because they're missing home, but actually it's bigger than that. And I think to use the term bereavement means that there's a phase of mourning they go through. And then quite often, they realize they're not going to get their parents back and they cut off something in themselves. The C is captivity. The child is captive. They're living in an environment where they're not free to come and go as they please. They are dependent on adults, prison warders, teachers, house parents to allow them to go out or not go out, to tell them what to wear. They wear a uniform. They eat uniform food. They may not like it, but they're supposed to eat it. And in the olden days, they were made to eat it. And that used to make people very sick and cause eating disorders. So they are captive. They're prisoners and they're let out on parole every little while they, when their parents come to fetch them. And of course, that's, you know, people who board for months at a time. Other people go home at weekends these days. So weekly boarding also happens. But still the child, many people I've seen who were weekly boarding, it wasn't OK. They they still felt abandoned. And there's no one who loves them to talk to them and tuck them up at night to hear the story of that child that they're not getting on with, the child that's trying to control them, the bully in the dormitory. All of that they're exposed to. And the, the, there is also a D. So these are convenient, A, B, C, D. They're very convenient that they somehow fit into this category. The D is disassociation. So the child that's gone through all this abandonment, bereavement and captivity realizes there's no escape and they cut off from their feelings. That grief that was probably expressed the first night under the covers where nobody saw. Um, and sometimes children cry for a week. I mean, some people, especially girls I've known, I know one girl who was weekly boarding and cried for two years. Every single Monday when her mother brought her back and longed for the, the one phone call she had in the week. And, um, 
but they they are captive and so what you do then is you stop crying eventually most people stop crying a lot sooner than she did so you cut off from the feelings mm-hmm. and um do, often does this show up in later life so people might present with uh depression or other kind of challenges in their in their midlife would that be fair to say yes it would be fair to say i mean i get letters all the time from people i you know i see clients and quite often they're people in midlife or maybe in their 40s who whose marriages have gone wrong they're feeling depressed or their marriage has not gone wrong but there's something there's some unspecific depression or anxiety um or sometimes terrible black moods that come upon people um and they sometimes come to therapy with that as a symptom uh, but broken relationships is quite common or they come to couples therapy as a couple and the complaint is that usually he can't talk about his feelings and uh, that is the presenting problem and very often they do not know that boarding school is the problem and Mm -hmm. so for therapists it's really important to be alert when somebody says they went to boarding school, to not just leave that as, oh, they went to a boarding school, but actually to think, okay, so what was the first day like for you? Is often a really good question because the first day is so powerful. Uh, some people describe it vividly. They remember that awful moment when they realized that their parents were going. They'd chosen it, maybe, some of them. Had they been to the school, had looked round, it looked really nice when they're six or ten or whatever um but they didn't understand and the parents say well you know he or she really wanted to go to boarding school they read harry potter Enid blyton harry potter these people who idealize boarding schools and make it um seem like it's really fun to be in a group of kids may realize on the moment that their parents leave that oh oh this wasn't i didn't understand that bit I didn't understand my parents were going to leave me here with strangers, with people who don't love me. And um, what might you say to someone who who has heard about boarding school syndrome and it resonates with them, but they think that's the past is the past and there's nothing that can be done about that? Do you think therapy could play a role for that person? Absolutely. If somebody if somebody's read about it and feels a bit desperate but recognizes that they're open and I do think sometimes giving them um, some of the reading uh, some material that other people have done putting them in touch with boarding school survivors support helping them think about maybe even going to some of the workshops which are put on by boarding school survivors is quite helpful I think it's it's becoming aware that this isn't just you this is a thing and that it's is it is serious and that you can you can come to you can get you know tell me about it talk about your dreams I think talking about dreams is really important often dreams reveal quite a lot about the deeper trauma and putting link making links and bringing it together is quite important and the thing about people being taken into care that comparison between boarding school and being taken into care because children in boarding school are actually children in care and that's that's really important because I think if you make that connection for people they sometimes can see it it's like people who are adults find it very hard to have sympathy for the child they once were people often come for therapy when their child gets to the age they were when they went to boarding school and they suddenly look at this child and they think, was, was I really that little? And and that often uh, can make them quite upset or very angry with their parents. Mm-hmm. And so there's an awful lot of material there, mm-hmm. potentially. Mm-hmm. That does help people. It does release people to express that to a therapist. It does release them um, eventually from being gripped by it I mean it's not going to go away because nothing about us ever goes away it's just part of your story and if it can be part of a story you can tell a narrative then that is so much easier than having this tangled mess inside you of pain 
Whereas if you can say this pain is caused by this and that, and these bit elements go to make up what causes the pain and caused it originally. And that's about then, it's not about now. That can help. And um, there's a connection between um, boarding school and quite high power positions, political and otherwise. Can you say more about that? Yes, because um, a lot of the boarding schools are preparation for going, having jobs in high places. That's what patients, what people's parents are paying for. They're paying for privilege. And a lot of the schools, especially the the big public schools do that. They they give people a privileged position in society and contacts both men and women. Um, there was an article recently about um, in the Telegraph about women in positions of privilege as well. So yes, it does prepare people for that, but it also prepares them to cut off from the less fortunate. That it's it never did me any harm can be the story because they're not in touch with the harm it did to them as a child because it takes a long time in therapy to get there and quite often not having empathy for the child that you were is replayed when you're making social policy I think so that not having empathy for the child that you were mm. means that you maybe don't have empathy for the less fortunate than you in society. So you're making policies and you may pay lip service to how this may help people, but actually, do you really understand? And I think that's also quite important to, to really see that, you know, there's a big inequality in society and that you had the cream. Mm the boarding at the ex-border had the cream in that sense but also didn't because they're terribly damaged many, many of them and don't know it or don't admit it to consciousness thank you so much joy thank you for your time thank you alice bye